today we're going to be looking at making a token template for Roll20. In this case I'll be using Photoshop um, Elements 12, but these same concepts can be applied across GIMP and other uh, image editing programs. The whole point of the template is to create a, a file where you can just paste in any image you want, and it'll just frame it, add that border to it, and a little bit of shadow to make it look a bit nicer. And if I click through some of my images here, you can see I've got demon lady, some magic-y woman, some pictures from, I believe that might be Pathfinder. But I've got loads and loads of images. And you know, they don't have to have to be fantasy. I've got one here of uh, Atrus from Mist, and Rhea from uh, Dark Souls. So let's go ahead and start with a new file. Each square in Roll20 is 70 pixels by 70 pixels, and they recommend that you create all of your assets at double resolution. So if you're making a token for a medium creature, which would be one square, you should create a file which is 140 by 140 pixels. So now we've got a blank token file of the correct size. The next thing I suggest you do is ensure that your grids are set up correctly. So edit preferences, guides, and grid. And we want to go on a grid lighten every 70 pixels. And then in Photoshop Elements, I believe it is Control Apostrophe, and you can see I've got this grid. Alternatively, if you go to View, you can turn it on in under View. So now we've got a snap all around the edge, and one to ensure that our positioning is correct. The next thing you're going to want to do is create a shape. This is going to form the border that sits behind our image. In this case, I'm just going to make a standard circular token, but of course you can do this with squares, stars, and whatever other shape you want. The principle is all the same. So I'm going to shift drag out a circle, which will take up the entire space of the token. And this is, as I said before, is going to form our border. So whenever we want to change the color of the border, we just double click the shape up here, and we can set it to whatever color we want. I'll go with a, in fact, I will go with F15 B22, layer of the raven uh, orange. Next, we'll need to create an inset for the actual image that will sit on top of the background. And remember that we're working at double resolution here. So I'm going to pull out a border that is 20 pixels by 20 pixels. And I'll have that border all the way around it. All I'm doing here is dragging it out of the rulers and holding down shift to snap it to those pixels, which will now, if I draw my second circle, which I shall set to, oops, which I shall set to white, and draw out the new one, you can see we now have our outside. And that border may actually be a tad too thick. I'll zoom out to 100% and see what it looks like. Yeah, that's gonna be too thick. So if I want to adjust that, it's quite simple. Let's say I want to halve it. So I'll just drag my border back to uh, 10 looks too shallow. So I shall zoom in, take that border to 15 on all sides. You could also do this using a finer grid. So I'm trying to keep this as basic as possible. And then just drag your circle out. Because it's a shape, it's going to be resized as much as you like, and it won't cause any issues with pixelation or what have you. There we are, that looks a bit, that looks, that looks better, yep. So now we have the basis for our template, the background border, the inside circle. So now I'm just going to go ahead and grab an image, which I've got off on my second screen to the side here. And this image is going to form the basis for the actual image on the token. So I'm just going to roughly select maybe a head and shoulders profile. I will actually redo that holding down shift to ensure I get a square selection. And I'll just copy and paste that in, zoom out a bit, and resize it down. Using the guides that I created for the circle, I can roughly place my token. I think I might get a bit of 
bit of that uh, shoulder in. So maybe something like that. The beauty of this method is that we can always change it earlier. And I'll just accept that to resize. Now you're begging the question, how do we now apply this so that it appears as our token should? There are a couple ways we should do it. There is the destructive method and my preferred non-destructive method. If we come to this circle that we created here, the white one, as you can see, it is the correct size of the image of our token. You could, if you wanted to, control click that, select your layer, hit, oops, not control layer, control shift I to invert it, and then just delete it like that. And that, that will work, that's fine. But if you wanted to move that image or resize it or repurpose it, then you are out of luck because you have destroyed those pixels. I'll just undo that. What you actually want to do is control click to select that circle, go to your layer, and then create a layer mask. And now what we can do is, over here where you can see the layer mask is over the actual image, if you, if you click that chain, turn the chain off, if I select my layer, I can move my image around, I can resize it, I can do all sorts of stuff without actually changing or interrupting the token itself. And this is very important because now we can paste in other images, reuse that layer mask, and well, all of our work is basically done. Before we look at making this uh, a tad more advanced, I'm just gonna show you the process of adding in a new image. So if I drag in my next image, yes, very fine, very good. I'll grab a square selection of that, control copy, paste it in, do a rough resize. That should do nicely. Then all we need to do now is you can either control click your original mask and add the layer mask in again. Or if you want to just reuse the same mask, just click and drag it up onto that next layer and it is done. There are a couple of things that we can do to make the template more advanced. The first thing you might want to do is add a bevel to the border to give it some depth. Now the issue with the bevel we've got right now is that if I was to go to layer, layer style, start settings, and add a bevel, you can see it's beveling up around here, but not around the inside, which makes our, if you wanted your token to look like that, that's fine, but it makes your token look very flat on the inside. What we want to do is select the inner, control shift I to invert the mask, and apply it as a layer mask. And now if I turn off my image, you can see we've got this ring, which means now if I go to my layer style, and re-add the bevel. You can see it's now beveling on the inside and the outside. You can adjust the size of that, make it look rounder or sharper. I'll go over a sharpish edge and turn my image back on. See, we've now got this nice looking border around it. If you're worried about stuff like this, where you can see we've got a slight issue with aliasing, what you should consider doing is getting a slightly larger layer mask around this to compensate for that, which is a simple case of selecting your image uh, layer mask, go to select, modify, expand, we'll increase it by two pixels, delete your original layer mask and just add a new one. And then, the final important thing to do is to drag it beneath your new, your new border. And there we are. A nice, wonderful frame that we can still set to whatever color we want. In fact, for, for this guy, he's probably best off with a, a green. 3C725C, layer of the raven green. And now we've got this nice little border going on. The second advanced thing I like to do is just adding a slight inner shadow. To the, the first thing we're gonna do is Right click our frame layer and duplicate it. And we'll just hide the originals. The next thing you want to do is clear the bevel, double click on the shape layer and set it to black. And then right click the shape layer and simplify it. 
which will give us that ring shape. Can't be recolored, can't be rescaled, doesn't have that layer mask, but is now an actual ring shape. The next thing you want to do is re-enable our border and image, drag our border above that, and we're just going to go to filter, blur, and I'll go with a Gaussian blur on this occasion. And as I start moving it out, you should be able to just see we're getting this nice sort of darkening effect around the edge. So if I set that to five pixels, looks pretty good. We now have a shadow on the inside and a shadow on the outside. Now that outside shadow is going to look awful because it's clipping on the edges. If you wanted to have tokens with full surround shadows, then you just make the, the to uh, token slightly smaller. In this case, you'd make it 10 pixels smaller so that you've got that space for the five pixel blur, and then you'd be able to have that drop shadow around it. But in our case, all we need to do is select our outside ring and add that as a layer mask. And now we've only got that inside shadow. If I zoom back out to 100%, and I just toggle it on and off, you can see that this is it turned on, and without it, it still looks fine, but with it turned back on, it adds a lot of depth to the token, which makes that bevel look even better. And that really is as simple as it is for making a token. If you want to make a token for a larger creature, because this is already 140 pixels, you could just whack that down on the board and just make it two squares by two squares, or you can create a new template, which is even larger in size, I believe uh, 280 by 280 and so on and so forth for creatures larger and smaller. As a baseline, I typically use this 140 for my large and medium creatures, and even for smaller, because at, at a certain point there's not much point making a, a small token, because you might want to use it for a medium creature later on. Indeed, to if I just reiterate by bringing this guy back up, move him into the correct position at the bottom of the stack, put this mask back on him, it is literally that simple to add new images, and just make a whole series of tokens. If you wanted, if you want to export this token, it's very simple. You could do a file save as PNG, but I suggest that you do a Control Alt Shift S, which is save for web, or file save for web. Select PNG twenty four, and this will ensure that you'll get your lowest file size possible for it. Obviously you want to have transparency and what have you. And then you just save it wherever you want and upload it straight to Roll20. As you can see from my Roll20 library, I've used this technique for a whole plethora of tokens. I sort of go between the hexagon and circles as the mood takes me. And I've got all these different colors of methods. I have all these creatures. I've tried to stick with a red border for enemies, yellow for neutral and green for allies. But you can really make them whatever color you want that uh, suits suits you. In the case of my player characters, each player character has their own colour, so their token has the correct border colour around it. But it is really simple and quick to just knock out as many tokens as you need using a template like the one we just made. Who's that handsome devil? And of course you can go nuts with it. If you wanted to create, for example, a centaur or other horse creature that is long, just create a 140 by 280 template, and bam, you've got your longer creatures that take up a 1x2 tile space rather than 2x2. Two two. This hunky 8-pack of a centaur. God damn it. Or perhaps you want to get funky with the borders of your tokens. For example, this casino chip-style border for my sniper wolf token. She was born on the battlefield. Victory and conflict were... No, that's Olga. But whatever sort of creature you want to make a token for, you now know the basics, and you can push forward, creating new devious creatures, traps, and tokens for your players to face in Roll20. For now, I'm Raven, and that's all from the lair.